Thou art worthy. 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 Give him a big one, man. Give him a big one. Give him a big one. Give him a big one. Rebo sha da 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 ba sha ba ba. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. Think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, open them up with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 11 in the NLT as we end this series on what it means to fall from grace. Today I want to talk to you about resting in the arms of Jesus. Resting, and the focus on that word resting, in the arms of Jesus. Many have asked, well, if we're not doing works, then what do we, what do, we do? We, we got to learn how to rest in the arms of Jesus, especially now with stress at an all-time high. People are just being attacked in their emotions like I've never seen. It is time to understand that the rest it's still available, and it is something that as Christians, I don't know if we've really gotten a hold of, but there's a warning given here that if we don't enter into this rest, we could end up like, like the generation of Moses and even Joshua, who, who they entered into Canaan land, was later put out because of their unbelief. Let's look at this. Verse 1. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So it's, it's still available. The, the, the part that I want you to be watchful of is that why hadn't it been entered into? What happened with Israel when they could have entered into that rest? And Joshua, his generation, the Bible even says here they didn't even obtain it. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. That some may, even in this day and time, they will fail to experience the rest. Mm. Verse 2. 
for this good news that God has prepared his rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did, it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. So he says, we ought to tremble today if somehow we crown ourselves as Christians, but we still don't believe. He says, you, you, you don't get in to God's rest without believing it, without having faith. Somebody say, I believe it. Without having faith, without believing it, you still won't enter in. And Christianity has become this thing of trying to work and perform with your self-efforts to try to deserve to get in. He says, but if you don't believe, you don't enter in. They died in the wilderness because they didn't believe. They didn't receive rest when they even got to Can Canaan because they didn't believe. World changes, I want to declare for you right now, you believe, praise God. You will enter into that rest. Verse, next verse. He says, for only we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, in, in my anger I took an oath they will never enter my place of rest, even though this rest has been ready since he made the whole world. And if you read in Hebrews 3, it, it talks about how they did enter in because of the rest, because of their unbelief. We know it is ready because of the place in the Scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. It's there for you to enter. <laughs> but those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. They didn't believe. And he, he, notice he says, he says, because you didn't believe, you disobeyed. He calls, he calls unbelief disobedience. So God set another time for entering his rest. And that time is today. I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about, I'm talking about today we going to enter into this rest today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua had succeeded, if he had succeeded, most people thought, he says, but if he had succeeded in giving them his rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest till to, to, uh, that's still to come. So even Joshua and them getting in Canaan, Obviously, they didn't believe even in Canaan to enter into his rest, or he says, I wouldn't be, I would still be talking about it. So there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. Mm -mm -mm. Something we're going to get into, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the beginning of a move of God in your life like never before. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. And you're going to find out here what he's saying is all those who entered into God's rest, they have rested from their self-effort. They have rested from their performance. They have rested from what they've been trying to do to get God to do something for them instead of resting and believing it's already done. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey or don't believe, God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. Do you understand that today's teaching is the most important teaching that you have ever heard? Because today, you're going to find out not only how to get victory, but how not to fall. How not to fall? Now, allow me the opportunity 
to just sow this into your head. The word rest, the definition after I looked at the dictionary's four conclusions, I'll show you the dictionary. When you look up the word rest, it means to cease from action and motion. The dictionary says you stop doing what you're doing. It means to stop from labor or exertion. But now how does this relate to God's rest, this definition? Well, God's rest, it means no more self-effort. No more trying to please God by your feeble, fleshy works. And the moment you enter into God's rest, works cease as a way to please God because you can't do enough work to be perfect. Rest from the sensation, rest from the legalistic self-activity. That's what it means in God's rest. Secondly, in, 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 in the dictionary, it, it meant to, you know, to have peace. But in God's rest, it means to be peace with God, be at peace with God, be free from guilt, no need to worry about sin because sin is forgiven. No more anxiety, no more pressure, no more shame, no more guilt because in God's rest, all that's been taken care of. The third definition I saw in the dictionary of the word uh, rest, to lie down and to be settled or to fix or to be fixed. So that relates to God's rest. It's you, to be established in Christ, be rooted and grounded in Christ. In other words, this rest means you need to rest. God's rest says you need to be established in Christ, no up and down. Oh, I'm saved one day. I don't know if I'm saved the next day. Oh, I'm righteous one day. I don't know if I'm righteous the next day. He said, no, you need to get established in Christ, not moving from doctrine to doctrine, not moving from philosophy to philosophy, not, not, not being cast to and fro with every wind of doctrine. When you rest, you're settled. The fourth definition of rest in, in the dictionary, it says, remain confident and put your trust in him. How does that relate to God's rest? Enjoy security. You have trust in God's care for you. No more being afraid about God not taking care of you. You now rest in the assurance that God's got me. And then the last one, rest means to lean on or to trust on. And to put all of these together, here's what the rest of God or God's rest means for us, as referring here in Hebrews 4 and 11. It means, here it is again, you didn't heard it for three or four years, it means to totally depend on God for support. It means to totally depend on God for support, totally depend on God for help, totally depend on God for the power, totally depend on God for everything you need. When you're resting, the authenticity of the rest is that you find a person who is in total dependence upon God for everything. You, you literally have a new relationship. Your relationship with God is a relationship of trust, a relationship of rest, a relationship of total dependence upon God. This relationship has a complete surrender and a complete trust in God. It is no longer how many times you can do this or how many days you can do that and the intensity of doing this, he is saying that to rest is a complete, total dependence upon God for everything that needs to happen in your life and while you are alive on this earth, I trust God. I trust God. And I'm telling you right now, you ought to start opening your mouth up when people start asking you about stuff and say, you know what? I trust God. Well, how's everything going? Not too good right now, but I trust God. <laughs> it, ain't, it, it ain't no problem telling them you know, in reality what's going on, but put that but in there because that but means I'm going to zero out whatever's going on, and what remains is that I trust God. I depend on God. I don't know how this going to turn out. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know the first step to take. I don't know where the money going to come from. Baby need a pair of shoes. Look, you got a light bill due. I don't know. I feel like I'm about to lose my mind and go crazy. I don't know how he going to do it. But the man that trusts God, something will happen when you lay your head down on the pillow. Glory to God. Somebody shout, I trust God.
And he is saying, I need you to enter into that. He said they, they wouldn't enter in in Moses' time. They wouldn't enter into that in Joshua's time. And he says it's still remaining today, and it is still waiting on whosoever will to rise up and say, some men trust in horses and some men trust in chariots, but I trust in the Almighty God. Now, rest is not inactivity. Because some of you were ready to go get your pajamas and a coat and just sit back and... That's not what it is. Rest is not inactivity. It's not rest from work. It's rest from the dead work. But it's not rest from work, but it's rest in work. It's rest while you're in motion. It's rest in doing the last thing he told you to do. Rest while you are working. In other words, you got bills to do, but you're still going to work. You don't sit there and say, well, I don't make enough money, so I stay home. No, you're still going to work because you're dependent on God to make up for what you don't have. You're not resting from activity. You're resting in activity. And rest while you're working. This is what God wants from us. He wants us to rest while we're doing what we're doing. You're, 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 you're in motion, trusting God. You're trusting God. You're walking, trusting God. You're dressing the kids up, trusting God. Cleaning your house up, trusting God. Doing all the things you do, trusting God. Don't know how this going to come out. Uh, listen, somebody said, you know, the rent is $500. I ain't got but $200. I'm going to write the $200 out trusting God. You, you, you'll, be, you'll be so amazed what God can do with a person that will dare to rest in the midst of activity, in the midst of doing what you do. I don't know how I'm going to feel. I might not feel better, but I'm going to do what's right because it's right, and I trust God that something's going to happen right in the middle of that. <laughs> Turning your neighbor, say, it's time to rest. Now, Psalms 46 and 10 puts it like this. I want to read it in the King James and then the TPT. Psalms 46 and 10, he says it like this. He says, so, he says be still and know. Shekakalah. Be still and know that I'm God. My goodness. I will be exalted among the heathen. He said the heathen are going to start exalting me when they see what I can do with you, but I can't do nothing with you until you get still. See, I need you to be still and know. Just like that army was coming against uh, this, the, these Israelites and, and they prayed because they didn't know what to do. And the Lord, the Lord told them, just be still. And then, and then they just started praising God. Because you can't be still in God and, and not, not praise Him. You can't be still in God and not worship Him. The devil needs to run when worship starts coming out your mouth. Be still and know that I am God. You got to know God going to move. You don't need to be jumping out no window because you don't know how you're going to make it. You got you to be still and know. Glory to God. You need to be taking no gun out and shooting everybody because you're frustrated with everybody. I'm going to kill everybody and then kill myself. You got to know God. And I'm telling you, that's about to come to the end because that kind of stuff going to bump into save folks and save folks know what to do in the middle of that kind of chaos. They don't know what to say about them because they might be a little shaken, but they know how to... Isn't that joke of drop that gun and run right in the arms of the police? You don't mess with somebody that's filled with the Holy Ghost that knows their God. Y'all got to help me. I feel like preaching now. Now look at this in the TPT. He says, surrender your anxiety. Be silent. Stop your striving, and you will see that I am God. 
How many of you want to see that God is God? He says, surrender your anxiety. Stop being anxious and stop worrying. Surrender your anxiety. How many of you, how, how many of you know what I'm talking about when, when I talk about being worried and anxious? You, you, it, it's, you, don't, you don't know what's going to happen. You, you're trying to be peaceful and at ease and, and your heart's still beating fast, but, and then you kind of humming, trying to hum it away, and, and, and you're trying to read the Scripture and your, your body's still responding from it. And, and he says, surrender your anxiety. That's the same as cast your care on him. He said, now be silent. Some of us just need to shut up. And, and when we don't know something, just shut up. Just don't be trying to talk to yourself. Just shut up. I'm going to show you an anointing of shut up in just a moment. It ain't part of the gifts of the Spirit, but it'll work. Surrender your anxiety. Be silent. Stop your striving. Stop you trying to do what you think is necessary for this to work. And you'll see that I am God. I am the God above all the nations. Wonder what it is, and, and I will be exalted throughout the whole world. Wonder what it is, the fact that I can go out in the street and bring somebody in who is sick that don't go to church and just tell them what you need to do is believe Jesus. And they come in, they get healed instantly. And then some other Christians have been here for 40 years and still trying to get well. Maybe there's some striving going on that you need to let go of and just believe God. All right? Now look at Matthew chapter 11, 28 and 30. Matthew 11, 28 and 30. Let's look at this in the uh, 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 New Living Translation. Now listen to this. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. How many of you know what it's like to carry some heavy burdens? Yeah, ain't nobody going to raise their hand in here. I sure know what it's like to carry some heavy burdens. But you know what he said? He says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I declare that over everybody's life, that your soul will enter into a rest right now. Some of you are tired in your soul, and I speak it right now in the name of Jesus that there's a rescue for your soul, praise God, your mind, your will, your emotions, hallelujah. He said, uh, Okay, I want to keep reading, but that, that, that's all. Verse 30, yeah. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you will be light. You know what he's saying here? Trust God to take care of you. Trust God to take care of you. Say it out loud. I trust God to take care of me. Now, listen to this very carefully. Under the old covenant, people would work first and then rest, okay? Under the new covenant, you start with God's rest, and then you, your work will be empowered out of that rest. In other words, you, you, you learn how to rest in God, and then you work out of rest. And when you work out of rest, work out of depending on God, work out of trusting in God, your work will be empowered. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and through 7. Let's look at that in the uh, King James. First Peter 5, verses 5 through 7. So the old covenant, work, then you rest. The new covenant, you start off resting, and then your work is, is, is born out of rest. In other words, I'm going to do what I do trusting God. I'm going to do what I do depending on God, you know? I'm just going to, I'm going to trust God, you know? I'm going to believe God, and, and some amazing things will begin to happen. First Peter chapter 5, he says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. Be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Now, I'm going to call you humble for right now. 
and he says he gives grace to the humble. All right, watch verse 6. So he said, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So now you're submitting yourselves unto God's plan. That's humility, all right? Trying to do your own plan, that, that's a prideful man. He goes on and he says, verse 7, now here he says, now if you're going to humble yourself unto God, cast your care upon him. He, he doesn't leave it at that. He says, if you're going to be humble, cast your care upon him because he cares for you. So this will authenticate your humility. A man that keeps his care and goes into self-preservation to take care of his own care, that is not a humble man. But a man who says, I'm casting my care on God. See, some people love to hang on to their care. Some people just love to worry. Some people are professional warriors. <laughs> worry means, worry is a negative meditation on the wrong thing. St spending your time thinking about the wrong thing all day as if you're thinking about the wrong thing is going to change it any. It won't change it, but it will change you, age you, hurt you, cause dis-ease in you. If somebody, if, so, people have been trying to discover the secret to long life. It's simple, peace. You do understand that, right? You, you do understand, those of you who love drama, that, that you are entering into the death cycle. And those of you who carry care, you have turned on the death cycle. Those of you who love the worry, you come, you, you, it's, you see, when, when you are, when you have dis-ease, when you're dis-eased in your soul, the disease enters into your body. Yeah. That's, what, that's, that's where a lot of cancers come from. It was no, it was no uh, secret to me where, where my cancers came from. I passed her. <laughs> but I can't use that as an excuse. Just because you, you passed her, you, better, you got to learn how to cast the care. But some reason, you just want to keep it. Oh, God, I've, I've, I've got experience. I, I, I know how to handle this. Stop. Even if you've been successful at doing it one way, maybe God told you to do it one way, but see, God, God's not doing the same thing every way. The Bible says he has, he has many wisdom, many, he calls it manifold wisdom, so he's got a lot of ways of doing the same thing. He might heal somebody with spit one day, and the next time he might just blow, and the next time he might just wink. Don't be trying to get methods of how Jesus operates. But what do you do with people who they just carry the care? They won't let it go. I'm telling you, you've entered the death cycle. I'm telling you, I have a clear-cut revelation. It's real simple. If I want to enjoy a long life, I got to keep my tongue from speaking evil, slanders. You got you to stay out of that talk, and you got to keep your mouth from telling lies. White lies or black lies, a lie is a lie. <laughs> All of that produces care. Wonder how many of you came with a burden on your back, a care in your soul, sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm so sick and tired. You got that right? The death cycle is, 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 is on because if you want to live long, you're going to have to learn how to discover peace. At some point in your life, you got to say, you know what, it'd be all right. Because can't nobody cause you to worry like folks you love. You do know that, don't you? So we're not talking about your deep, dark enemy from 20 years ago. We're talking about the ones you love. So you better learn how to get peace with them. You better get away from this thing about, oh, y'all remember this, you ain't going to embarrass me. See, it ain't about you. Your children, 43. That's just like a lady who say, 
You know, they asked, well, you know, you, you're still overweight. She said, because I had a child. Well, how old is your child? What? Well, he's 50. Church should not be a place where we come to absorb more drama. Church should be a place where we come to lay our burdens down, to cast our care on God, to say it's going to be all right, that I'm not going to be looking cross-eyed at nobody. I, it's too stressful to be, have an enemy. It's too stressful to be mad at somebody. It's too stressful. You are killing yourself. Well, I noticed you ain't hugged me. Well, go hug him. <laughs> how you come to church and be stressed out the whole time? Because I don't like how they looked at me or I don't like... First of all, let's get this straight. Ain't no perfect church nowhere on the planet. Not nowhere on the planet. So let's get that straight. The reason why there ain't no such thing as no perfect church is because there ain't no such thing as no perfect people. I don't know why y'all keep leaving and coming and leaving and coming. You, you finding out what I'm saying is true. Ain't no perfect, not nowhere, ain't no perfect pastor nowhere, ain't no perfect church nowhere, ain't no perfect bookstore nowhere, ain't no perfect traffic people nowhere, ain't no, ain't no perfect choir, no perfect, everybody gonna crack if not, ain't no perfect nothing. Amen. Let it go. Let it go. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. When I'm walking through the lobby and somebody, somebody got their kid, got chocolate all on their hands, and the kid all out there at the front light desk, and I'm trying to do something nice for, so we can have some, and the kid just putting it all over there, and mama just sitting there like she don't see the <laughs> dog old kid putting chocolate everywhere, and you sitting back there looking at us and like, would you get your child, and you like. <laughs> and you talk about that for two days, God dog, and some of these people need to watch their children. Well, some of them don't watch their children, but thank God for soap and water and paint. I know it's true because I'm talking about me. <laughs> it's like, ooh, get your, and you, you got, you, 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 it was back in the day when the S curl was out. You just had a, you remember the S curl? <laughs> and I just go hug somebody who had my glasses on. And I come out, one eye, can't even see, the other one just <laughs> S curled all up. <laughs> now you know you shouldn't have hugged me, and you just, shh, you just, shh. And then you want to sit down, my God. When we first moved in the dome, and, and, and slide down, and put your S curl all on the back of the seat. I can't preach, because I see your little spot I used to be that anal. I, I stopped preaching one time and told the vision keeper, go get the vacuum, because then it got glitter all on the floor. And I put it on God, and God don't, God's an excellent God, and he don't like glitter all on the floor. God don't care about no glitter on no floor. That was just cares. And now, if you want to live long, you want to live long. Ain't no secret. Pursue peace. Y'all laughing because it was you too, it wasn't just me. <laughs> Look at Psalms 55 and 22. Some of you used to get so irritated, you didn't even remember what was wrong. <laughs> Somebody speak to you, hey, how you doing? 
hey, how you doing? I heard you, I heard you. <laughs> they looking at you, she ain't saved. <laughs> she don't know Jesus. <laughs> All right, now watch this. Psalms 55, 22. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. What a great scripture. Cast it on the Lord. So part of my journey now is to learn how to, to say it'll be all right. It's just things kind of calm down. You know what? It, it, it'll be fine. I don't know why, I don't know. I don't know the whole detail. I don't know. It'd be fine. Because I want to live long. I want to live longer. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to go until I'm done and until I want to. You know, the Lord said you can stay as long as you want to. I, I, I don't want to, you know, when, when I'm not in this pulpit no more, it's not like, well, he getting ready to go, not until I want to. There's some things I want to do. And one of the things I want to do is to put what I want to be buried in before I leave. I don't want to leave it up to relatives and funeral homes. I'm going to go ahead and put on what I want to put on, and y'all just freshen me up and throw me in a box. We're going to do what we need to do. Then nobody need to worry about that. Funeral already paid for, everything done. And, and, and think about that, too. Think, think, think about it. You know, it ain't no, ain't no problem with you getting a little insurance. At least just enough to bury yourself. It, it ain't no, no problem to do that. And, and, and uh, I can't afford what I'm doing, not insurance. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, get, get a little insurance, a little insurance. A little insurance. A little insurance. Little insurance. Because that used to bother me, too. Like, what? And back then, I wasn't saying, it'll be all right. I'm like, <laughs> I used to say words that rhyme like with ninja. <laughs> okay, Joshua 24 <laughs> and verse 13. Now, let's look at the opportunity and what God was demonstrating in the Old Testament where rest is concerned. Joshua 24 and 13, he said, you know, because we think he needs our labor. Though all that if God don't have our, my labor, he can't do nothing. If, God, if I ain't working, then God can't do nothing. How I many you know God don't need you to be who he is? Look at verse 13. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor. And I gave you cities which you built not. And you dwell in them. And I gave you vineyards and olive yards, which you planted not. Do ye eat from those? So he, he gave you stuff you didn't build. You eating from stuff you didn't plant. God is like, when did I need you? <laughs> Look at Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 13. Yeah, you can trust God because he can give you cities you didn't build. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I say that, Lord. He's working on some stuff right now you won't be responsible for. God Almighty is getting ready to do something in your life where you're not going to have any choice but to lift your hands up and say, I ain't had nothing to do with this. I just trusted in God, and God did this for me. Hallelujah. I didn't build it. I didn't plan it. He did it. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you can trust him. Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 13. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give, uh, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses. I feel a house anointing in this room this morning. And houses 
full. I, and, and I know that happens, because I did it. I sold a house and left everything in the house. They had, they had to do nothing but bring their clothes, and if they wanted them, there was a big bag in the garage they could have got. I'm telling you, God will do that. He'll put it on people's hearts to leave a house that's full of good things. He knows how to talk to people that you're going to be dealing with. Just trust him. And he says, I gave them houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not. And then he said, wells that were already digged, which thou diggest not. Vineyards and olive trees, which thou planteth not. Now notice what he said here. Here's the key. When thou shall have eaten and you're full, beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You know what he's saying? Don't forget to thank God when he does something for you. Don't go around talking about, well, I don't know. I don't know how this happened. I don't know what's going on. You call the IRS and say, I'm calling to pay my bill. They say, ma'am, we can't find no record that you owe nothing. Don't sit on the phone for 10 more minutes trying to get them to check something else. You hang that phone up real quick. They say, I can't find nothing. You say, bye. You don't even say bye. Click. Hallelujah. Click. Because I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do something that you won't be able to take credit for. Hallelujah. Just trust him. Believe him. Believe that he can and believe that he will. You, you need to praise him in this place, I'm telling you. You need to praise him in this place. You don't need to wait until it's done. You need to start praising him like it's already done. You need to start thanking him and you ain't seen nothing yet. Now, 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 watch this. Watch this. I'm telling you, there's an anointing being released. He getting ready to show you just who he is. Philippians chapter 4, verse three, 6 through 7 in the NLT. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7 in the NLT. Now, now watch this. Here it is again. Don't worry about anything. Well, somebody said, well, if I'm not worrying, then what else can I do? He said, instead of worrying, pray about everything. Don't worry about anything, pray about everything. So. In place of worrying, pray. Tell God what you need. You know, sometimes we go around worrying about a need being unmet and hadn't even, hadn't even checked in with God. So just say, God, I need you to do. Can you, Lord, hear what I need. Tell God what you need. And don't wait until you see it. Go ahead and thank him for all he has done. That's the life of depending on God. Lord, I need this. Thank you. And get on up and keep it moving. That's, that's the life of faith. But there's so much fear and intimidation in the world that you forget God. Don't forget God. Well, I don't know if I believe like that. Well, Houston, we got a problem. Because believing to God is like gasoline is to your car. Yeah. You got to have it to move. Yeah. Well, I got an electric car. Well, it's like electricity to your car, then. <laughs> your smart self. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He says, when you do that, then, listen to this, man, I believe this, then you will experience God's peace. So if nothing else, you get your peace. And a lot of stuff can get to you because you got your peace. A lot of stuff being blocked up because you're not in peace. Peace is, is your most valuable asset. If it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. You got to hold on to this peace like it's, like it's breath. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace Watch this, will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. We need a guard, because out of your heart flows every issue of life. And if your heart is not being guarded with peace, that's impacting the harvest. The harvest, I guarantee you. You go look at your harvestless life. And you will notice you also have a peaceless life. No, it's, it's everything. That's why Jesus said, peace I leave you. Then he said, my peace. Jesus' peace can keep you emotionally stable when you're going through a rough time. That's why it's his peace. Peace that you don't even understand. Why am I not going crazy? Why am I not losing it? Why didn't I blow my brains out? Why? Because Jesus' peace prevents that from happening. Say out loud, I have Jesus' peace. Not the peace that comes from the world. The peace that comes from the world is conditional peace. The conditions need to be right for you to have peace. But Jesus' peace is not based on the condition. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms chapter 4 and verse 8 in the NLT. Psalms 4 and 8 in the NLT. Uh, Psalms 4 and 8, NLT, he says, In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Isaiah 26, 3 in NLT, In peace I will lie down and sleep. Somebody says, I need to take a sleeping pill. No, you just need to get in peace. Get in peace. You know you don't sleep good when you're not in peace. Verse 3, you will keep him in perfect peace. All right, how do I get that peace? All who trust in him, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. See, when you're not in peace, your thoughts are fixed on the issue of problems. We've got to practice fixing our thoughts on him. We've got to practice saying, I trust God. God until it becomes a working reality on the inside of your heart. And then look at 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 in the message. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 and 18 in the message translation. This is so cool here. He says, so we're not giving up. We're not giving up. Say it. I'm, say I'm not giving up. Don't raise your hands. How many of you ever felt like giving up? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> That's the first thing I said. Don't raise your hands. <laughs> so we're not giving up. So house of world changers, we're declaring this to all of the demons of hell so they can take it back to their boss. <laughs> we're not giving up. It's, it's been rough, it's been tough, it's been frustrating, it's been anxiety, it's been this, it's been brokenness, it's been abuse, it's been sickness, it's been pain, it's been close to dying, it's been loss of loved ones. Uh, take this to your boss, we're not giving up. 
We're not giving up. Come on, somebody say it. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Mm. I know you felt like it. I know you even said it. I know you even planned it. We're not giving up. Whew. You know what that does to your guardian angels? Yeah. You know what that does to your soul? It's refreshing to adhere to your spirit that says weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I'm not giving up. I'm going to just go to bed. I'm going to show you something about that going to bed in a minute. Some of y'all might go home and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. Even though on the outside, it looks like it's falling apart. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. That his grace is, has been enveloped, ready to unfold right when you, not a day goes by when the unfolding grace of God is not made available to you. He says these hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. It's like small potatoes. So you might as well go and make a potato salad, bro. There's a far more, there's far more here than meets the eye. There's a bigger reason why you're going through what you're going through. There's a bigger reason why you were hurting the way you were hurting. There's a bigger reason why you couldn't sleep for the last three nights. There's a bigger reason why you've been dealing with what you've been dealing with. There's a bigger reason more than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. You may not be able to see the provisions of God, but it's there. You may not be able to see the angels getting ready to help you, but it's there. You may not be able to see the plan of the Holy Spirit right now, but it's there. You may not see what God has already planned for you, things that are good, things that will work out for your good, but it is there. Those things you can't see are eternal. You have eternal things working for you in the name of Jesus. Everything is going to be all right. We're not going to quit. Let's look at this sleep. Psalms 127, verse 1 through 2 in the King James, Psalms 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it because it's going to fall down one day. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late at night to eat the bread of sorrows. Nobody knows <laughs> the trouble I've seen. Remind me of the line on the Wizard of Oz. I'm the king of the forest. <laughs> For so, now notice what in context he's saying. It's vain for you to, you know, it's vain for you to try to build a house. It's, it's vain for you to rise up early. It's vain for you to sit up late. It's vain for you to sit up and eat the bread of sorrows. For so, for all that, he giveth his beloved, what? So sleep may be God's plan for giving us the help he cannot give us while we awake. Y'all don't, don't hear me. God is about to do more when you sleep than you are when you awake. 
It's no longer just sleeping because you're tired. But he, I see it, but I don't know how to say it unless you tell me how to say it. The, 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 the dream realm somehow can cross the barrier of the spirit realm. And what he couldn't give you while you were fully awake in your natural self, when you dismissed that natural self and went to sleep, he was able to slip something in from the spirit mm, concerning your journey or will of God for your life. That's why the devil wants to fight you so hard and to keep you all distracted up here and to keep you all this stuff so you won't discover that there's a barrier that crosses that spiritual barrier. I'm telling you, God's going to show you some stuff in your sleep. There are witty inventions that you can get when you sleep because you're not, you, you, you ain't in his way. You're going to see some stuff. Mm. You're going to know some stuff that you didn't have in your brain. Do you know how many inventions came forward by people that didn't have no idea what they were doing, but they saw it while they were asleep? You know how many discoveries, how many cures, how many amazing ideas that happened while people were asleep? I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> the very answer you need for the problem while you awake can be taken care of when you sleep. And you look at that pillow and you say, when my head hits the pillow, it's going to hit the pillow in peace and my sleep is going to be sweet. Amen. And it's almost when you go to sleep, it's like heaven say, good, now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now look at this, Mark chapter 4, 35, 38. Give me about five minutes. It's, it's Easter next summer, so, I mean, next Sunday. <laughs> next summer, next Sunday. East, uh, Mark 4, 35 through 38 in King James. Mm. Same day when the evening was calm, he saith unto them, let's pass over unto the other side, Jesus said. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he, referring to Jesus, was in the back part of the ship, asleep on a wet pillow. Okay, I'm just assuming it was wet since the water <laughs> was in the boat, but Jesus was in the back asleep. He was asleep. Why are you worried about the wind and the waves when you got Jesus in your boat. You got him living on the inside of you, walking with you every day, and you're worried about the storms of life when Jesus is in your boat. You got to know that while he was asleep, he was controlling everything asleep. <laughs> Wasn't no more water going to get in there than the boat could have without sinking. And if it was going to sink, they'd have still been all right. He'd allow for them to breathe underwater like a fish. You got Jesus in the boat. Why are you worried about the water and the wind when Jesus is in the boat? Why are you worried about your life when Jesus is in the boat? 
Why are you worried about how the bill's going to be paid when Jesus is in the boat? Why are you worried about your children when Jesus is in the boat? And this is what people do who don't understand the power of Jesus being in the boat. They woke him up. More powerful asleep. They woke him up. Check him out. And they said, Master. Now, wasn't this pretty when they woke him up because they, they had anxiety now. Because they're tripping out. Dude, he sleep. Don't he feel all of this? Master. I'm going to kind of say it like Kyle Paul. Don't you even care we about to die? How did it go there? How are you not questioning his care? Because when you question God's care, fear is going to come in on the inside of you. When you don't trust that God can take care of you, you're scared to give. Because you don't trust he can take care of you. You keep making all these excuses. To, well, I ain't going to give. You see the tie the preacher had on. That ain't it. That ain't none of it. You scared to give because Jesus sleep in the boat and, and you're like, don't you, don't you care about us? Next verse. And he arose and rebuked the wind. Because that was just the issue, it was wind. And said unto the sea, be still. And the wind stopped. And it was a great calm. Now, you can think what you want to think, but can you imagine Jesus sleeping? The, the amazing stuff going on while he sleep? And they woke him up? It's kind of like if you were to die and go to heaven, and you're just about to hug Jesus, and somebody call you back. You say, now the Lord gonna have to forgive me because I'm finna cuss all y'all out. Because I ain't paid my rent. Now you done called me back here and I, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna get my, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna get the rent money from. I was in the arm of Jesus. And there was a great calm. And in the next verse he said, and he said unto them, why are you so, watch this, fearful? How is it that you don't have no faith? And the Bible said that they can't enter into that rest because they didn't have faith. They either should have let Jesus alone or went to sleep with him. And that's how we are today. We come to church, we hear this, we get charged up, we're fired up, and then we go home and a storm comes and we, we get full of fear. Because we say we trust him when ain't nothing going on. But when they nailing something to your door and carrying a coffee table out, you have given up on Jesus when he will never give up on you. You have no idea what's about to happen. Maybe you got evicted because he'd been trying to get you into the house of your dreams, but you wouldn't ever move because you were so scared. And so he put you out as an act of mercy and grace, just like he did Adam and Eve. Put them out of the garden so they wouldn't maintain that sin nature for the rest of eternity. See, we can talk that religious stuff, which really turns me off. Because there's always the question, do you mean it? Oh, I'm going to enter into the rest. Well, it's easy to rest when there's no storms. But you got to be that kind of person that sleep good when it's raining and thundering and lightning outside. That you didn't even know it because you were sleeping good. That's faith and trust. And he says, you need to tremble so that you won't be 
another generation that fails to enter in because you had no faith. But I'm here to tell you today, child of God, Jesus is in your boat. Jesus is in your boat. Well, I hear what you're saying, Reverend, but if I do nothing, then I get nothing. See, that's only true if you're without Christ. But the moment you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, then he goes to work. Listen to this. If you rest, then God will work. But if you work, then God will rest. You got, you got to decide what you're going to do. Because while you're working, he resting. I'm going to rest so he can do the work. In fact, he's already done the work. Can I have two minutes? John 5, 17, King James. John 14, 10, King James. Galatians 2, 20, NLT. And I'm done. John 5, 17. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh. Hitherto I work. He's working. John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Galatians 2 and 20 in NLT. And as a result of this, that he's working, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Closing statement. I now believe this. I'm not living for God. God is living for me. God is living for me. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you that these ears have been anointed to hear the gospel. Their hearts have received the gospel. And today, we rest in your finished works. We rest in Jesus by faith and trust. Our new life is a life that depends on you for everything. And let our efforts and our sweat not hinder you from doing what you do best for us. You know everybody's situation at the sound of my voice. Those who are in this church, those in the e-church, and those who are viewing through other methods, you know all of their situations. Lord, I believe in miracles, and I believe for a miracle for every person in here right now. Instant, an instant blessing to come on them instantly right now, that they trust you more and more, that they talk themselves into faith and talk themselves to stand in the faith. No matter what, no matter what, I trust God. No matter what, come hell or high water, I trust God. And with this simple move, open your heavens. Convince them beyond all shadows of any doubt that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all and more than they are able to ask or think. Let your glory be revealed to every household. Let the manifestations of your glory be revealed to every family. I thank you, Lord, that they have ears to hear, hearts to receive. Flow your will down now. Flow your will down now. Let it be seen 
by those who don't know you and allow us to be a vehicle to bring them in to the family of God. Every care, every worry, all anxiety, we cast upon you now. Do you think, God? We trust you. Teach us how to keep our mouth closed when you're not instructing us to open it and use it. And, and, and help us to keep our emotions check so that they won't begin to rule what we do, what you have us to do, what you call us to do, what you instruct us to do. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Do it now. A supernatural manifestation while men and women are sitting down. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, it is our time to give. We extend our prayer and our giving. And we say, mighty God, that you have made us generous givers. We are not afraid to give because we know you care for us. Speak to our hearts. Show us and guide us even in our giving. Let us break any fear barrier right now. Let us break any religious devotion where our giving. Let us not give out of necessity. Let us not give out of pressure. Let us not give out of wrong motivation. But right now, Lord, let us move into this space of giving out of our love, out of a cheerful heart, out of a want to for you and the kingdom. In Jesus' name, we give unto the Lord glory due unto you. We bless you, Father. Thank you. And right now, we just, we just walk in the Spirit while we are awake right now. We thank you by just doing your word. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hands and the ushers will be more than happy to serve you. We don't separate our giving. We, it's a part of our worship. It's a part of who we are as children of God and people of God, that we take it as serious as the Word, as serious as our worship, as serious as our praise, that we give unto our God. My goodness. If you're in our e-church, you know what to do. The information is on the screen. If you dare to break out of your religious fear <laughs> concerning giving, the information is on the screen. We are so blessed to be able to pastor such a magnificent people who hunger and thirst for the will of God in their lives. And it is our great pleasure to teach you according to God's Word, not our feelings and our emotions, and to see your life transformed by the power of God. Amen. Praise God. Woo! Y'all got anything out of that or did I just holler? I got blessed teaching it. Go ahead, hold your offerings up right now. Father, thank you for this opportunity to give into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give glory to your name. You said to bring an offering and to worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you for allowing us to continue to be students of the Word and students of grace. And may all that we do from the Word be demonstrated in our lives. We praise you and thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, you can go ahead and receive the offering. Thank you. Praise God. 
Now, while they're receiving the offering, those of you who are here today and you've never been born again, you've never made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to be saved today. It's totally up to you. If you're here today and you believe that God is calling you to join this church, World Changes Church International, I want to give you that opportunity today. If you're here and you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues or recommit yourself to God, you're still saved, but you're like, I just, I want to have a, some kind of outward act to, to re-energize my relationship with Him. I put it down and I hadn't picked it up and I'm ready to pick it up and be all that God has made me. Nobody can make you do anything. You know that. But what an opportunity we have to come to the altar, the place of transformation, and to say at that altar, Lord, I believe you. Save me. Lord, I believe you. Feel me. It's a time for you to do what you believe God's called you to do. Well, aren't you going to tell us we're going to go to hell if we don't do it? Nah. I'm trying to make sure no condemnation comes from this pulpit. What I will tell you is that God loves you, and He loved you while you're yet a sinner, and He's never going to give up on you. He's never going to leave you. You have to make the decision. So that's it. If you want to decide in any of those areas, you can get your Bibles and personal belongings and come on down and we'll pray with you and believe God for you. In Jesus' name. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. And should there be any rivers we must cross, should there be any mountains we must climb, God will supply all the strength that we need. Give us strength till we reach the other side. We have come from every nation. God knows each of us by name. And Jesus shed his blood and he washed our sins and he washed them all the way and yes there are some of those who have laid down their lives but we all shall meet again on the other side oh soon soon and very soon we are born to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more dying there, no more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to 
to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see. One more time, soon and very soon. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we're going to see the King. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap. Ma, 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 ma. Woo. That is an old song. But it is just true, just as true today as it was when Andre Krauss wrote it. Amen. Father, we thank you for those who've come to this altar. And I pray that you will minister life to them, blessing to them, turn everything around that needs to be turned around, and they will never be the same again because of you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Praise God. You turn this way and follow these gentlemen to the prayer room. They're going to take you and minister to you give you biblical understanding of how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive, and we thank God you'll never be the same again. Amen. So happy Passover. <laughs> happy Palm Sunday and all other stuff. Amen. And look forward to uh, our celebration uh, next week starting on Friday, and we're just going to be celebrating uh, doing some amazing things, and I'm, I'm just so excited about it. Thank you all for coming to church today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being an amazing fellowship of believers that just trust God and continue to be students of grace. Amen? Amen. And now may the power of God's Spirit be upon you all. May you come to know him as a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. May you come to recognize that you are sons of God. May the angels of God continue to carry out what God has commanded them to watch over you lest you dash your foot against the stone. I pray divine protection against chaos, confusion, crime, that it shall not come near you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, your family, over your life, that you will live long and prosper. I declare the peace of God over your life, and I declare grace, grace to every mountain, and that all is well with you. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling <laughs> and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an amazing day, everybody. We love you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Trust God, bro. Trust God, bro. <laughs> Trust God. <laughs> hey, World Changers, uh, we are just so thankful for each of you that tuned in today for service. Man, a powerful, powerful, powerful service. Powerful. Listen, God is too real, and he's too good. Too good. What you, what you get out of service today, Yana? I mean, you, you took what I said, you I'm know. My, hey, my bad. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Trust God. Like, literally, yeah. that's the mic drop. Yeah. Trust God. He's in the boat with you. He's in the boat. He's in the boat with you. So if he rests, then you need to rest. And some of you need Trust to go to sleep. God. Go to sleep. I, I know I have. Listen. <laughs> Listen. You got to go to sleep. Sleep. If he sleep, I'm sleep. Yeah. Listen, I, what I got especially, one the one thing that just stuck out for me was when you rest, um, when you, if you rest, God will work. But if you working, God is resting. Yeah. Listen, I choose rest. I choose rest. I choose rest. Trust God. Trust God. Listen, that. That's it right there. Listen. 
Share what you got from today's message in the comments right now. Share, share, share with yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Today was such a blessing, man. And we definitely encourage you, of course, to share this message uh, to someone that you love. Share with someone else. There are going to be re-airs today, of course, um, following service. But still, share with yourself. Rewatch re it. Mm -hmm. Rewatch it. Take them notes. Mm -hmm. Have your own Bible study. Mm -hmm. Whip yourself and Jesus. Get you some coffee or something. Yep. A little snack. And just and just relive it and get that word on the inside of you. I mean, we listen. got a bunch of scriptures that was shared so uh, make uh -huh. sure and go back read the scripture read it in another version another yeah. version I, listen you have no excuse so none, none get whatsoever, your word. Get whatsoever. Your word. man god is so good well listen uh world changes we want to make sure that if you did not get an opportunity to give we want to make sure that you have the opportunity right now we have a few different ways that you can participate in giving uh one of those of course you can simply Text the word world changers, leave a space, and then your amount, and text that to 74483. Mm -hmm. You can also call in your gifts to 866 477 7683. You can also mail in your gifts to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349, or of course online at worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. Mm -hmm. The fact is that we get, we get to, to give. give. It's, it's not an obligation. A, it's such an honor. Like, yeah. man, God has been so good. He is too good constantly, always. So why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't why I? Why I get to. I get to. And I get to trust him to and do I it. I get to man, trust him. Like, I'm, I'm excited. Listen, I'm like fired. I'm fired up. I'm for real fired up. Oh, oui. No cap, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's keep uh, keep it moving. We do have a few upcoming announcements that we want to share. Uh, Ayana, what do we have first coming up? All right, y'all. Pastor done talked about it. Mm -hmm. Easter weekend. We got a nice lineup. Weekend. Yes. I'm excited. Wow. wow. I'm excited because we're going to start off with our Good Friday block party on Friday, March 29th. Mm -hmm. This will be a time of food, fellowship, back baptisms. I know a few folks that I'm going to be cheering on who are getting baptized on Friday. I'm like, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> Listen, the night begins at 6 p.m. with the water baptisms, followed by a Good Friday celebration yeah. with special guest Leandria Johnson. To register for water baptisms and the block party, we want you to text WCCI Easter to 51555. And then, and then, and then, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we have on Sunday, first up, our sunrise service. As Pastor said, registration is closed. However, we got overflow in the dome. So even if you can't make it into the chapel on Sunday morning for sunrise service, you can be right here yeah. in the dome, in the blue seats, watching on the screen mm -hmm. with the overflow, mm -hmm. still getting the same good old word That's right. in a good old sunrise service. That's right. But... If you can't make it to sunrise service, you like, man, that's too early. <laughs> we we know we know some of y'all. Um, ten o'clock. Ten o'clock is our Sunday service, our that's Easter right. service. We're so excited. Come on out in your Sunday's best. Sunday's best. Even if you if you like, listen, I'm wearing a t-shirt and jeans. Come on out. We want to see you here. Mm -hmm. We're going to have such a good time. We celebrating Jesus. Celebrating Jesus. Listen. You, man. Listen. All right Listen, now. All right now. What he has done for us. All right now. Listen, Sunday service. Come on out, celebrate with us this Easter weekend. We yeah. are so excited. Mm. Especially a Good Friday with them baptisms. I, I'm telling you. I'm excited too. I'm, I'm excited. I'm telling you. We're <laughs> well, going to be cheering you on, y'all. Well, right after Easter, we do have our change experience. So, New York. I said New York. New York. <laughs> New York, New York. New York, son. Uh, New York, we coming out, of course, <laughs> New York and the surrounding areas. So if you're ready for change, I want you to join us. Join us in New York on Friday, April 26th for the second and final stop of the Change Experience mm -hmm. Tour. It's going to be one day, two sessions, but where you can also encounter God's presence with Creflo Dollar. Mm -hmm. So to register, text CHANGE2024 to 51555 to reserve your spot. And share that with someone someone else that you know. You got, you got, you got people in New York you and the surrounding areas. You got people in New York. Mm -hmm. So inviting them all out. It's going to be an amazing time. Change Experience New York is coming up. And right after Change Experience, ladies. 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 We got Lemon Bliss coming lemon up. Lemon Bliss. Lemon Bliss. 
So, ladies, we want you, of course, to treat yourself to something sweet. Mm -hmm. Lemon Bliss 2024 is back and classier than ever. I know y'all do it up because that's what y'all do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, ladies, join us on Saturday, May 4th at 11 o'clock a.m. as we honor all women who nurture and inspire because every woman deserves to be celebrated. So we're building tomorrow's legacy with generational wealth and learning how to manage our finances as God intended with Jade Warshaw. Mm -hmm. Now, tickets are only $58, and that does include brunch. So when life gives you lemons, get lemon bliss. Yes. And the church said. Amen. It'll be such a great <laughs> gift for Mother's Day. You it can take be. your mom, your aunt, any type of mother figure. Every year we do Lemon Bliss. We yeah. have such a great time. Come on out, celebrate, and get some brunch, y'all. That's right. And some, uh, some good stuff from Jade Warshaw. Great advice from the Ramsey Show. We're excited, so I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. Now, to register, simply text the word Lemon Bliss, all one word, to 51555. Seating is limited, so be sure to mm -hmm. register. Seating is limited. And last Last but not least for today, Grace Life. Grace Life Grace 2024 <laughs> is coming up. The reunion. Tickets are officially available, World Changers. So save your seat. We want to see y'all in these blue seats. Mm -hmm. In these blue seats. Mm -hmm. Make it a family reunion. That's right. Get the caravan. Get the, 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 the mega bus. Uh -huh. Whatever you need to do, register. So register today by texting Grace Life to 51555 or visiting CrufflowDollarMinistries.org. We want to see you in the building July 11th through their 13th right here in the international city of international College city Park. make it a week <laughs> have a like i said family reunion we got a whole bunch of stuff going on in the city you can uh go to grace life then go downtown have some brunch uh -huh. go down to college park downtown uh -huh. college park do whatever just come on down make it a great time this summer that's right grace life 2024 it's gonna be good. It's gonna it's gonna be it's so gonna good. be good. Well, listen um, <laughs> now to stay up to date with all of our events, just be sure to visit worldchangers.org. Check out the events so you can stay up to date with everything that's coming up from women's fellowships, mm -hmm. men's fellowships, and so much more. Well, world changers. It's been an amazing Sunday. We're going to go get something to eat ourselves. We want you to get something to eat and continue to pump it out, to continue to pump that word into your ears, to continue to renew your mind and continue to change your life. And remember, trust God. Trust God, bro. Trust God. We want y'all to have an amazing Sunday. You all be blessed. Bye. Are you ready to come home? Grace Life Conference 2024, the reunion is coming. Creflo and Taffy Dollar will be joined by special guests Andrea Creighton, Gregory Dickow, Bishop Clarence McClendon, Inky Johnson, Michael Smith, Hezekiah Walker, and Brian Courtney Wilson. July 11th through 13th. Don't miss this experience that includes our annual mentality and ministers and leaders conferences. Text Race Life to 51555. Change.